Mr. Bauman, the first question goes to you. It's not a secret that Connecticut is considered a poor place to start or maintain a business. High taxes and high energy costs, along with excessive regulations, have forced many companies to close and move elsewhere, taking their skilled and educated workforce with them. If you are elected governor, what specific steps will you take to reverse this trend? Mr. Bowden, may I interrupt you before you start? I didn't tell you that there's a man, Ron Goldstein, sitting in the middle of the front row who is the timekeeper, and he will display a card when there is 60 seconds left, and then another card when there are 30 seconds left, and then finally a red card when there's no time left, and he'll say the word time, and at that point, you should be done. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Bowden. Okay, did I come off by 90 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. It's great to be here. And special thanks to uh, the Colchester uh, Town Committee for putting such a wonderful event together. This is very professional. I might add, I like this. This is uh, kind of cool. So let me get to the question. Really, I think there's four key things that we can do right out of the bat, right off the bat, to be able to help businesses in Connecticut. One is we have to be able to speed up the permit uh, time in terms of being able to issue permits from our departments and the state of Connecticut. It takes way too long for a business to get a permit, to apply for a permit, and it takes way too long for the state to process that permit. That's something we can do that absolutely doesn't cost any money, but certainly is something that we can do uh, quickly. Two, we have to repeal the business entity tax. The business entity tax is just a nagging tax that's out there that uh, is put out by the state that sends a message that you're in business, we don't like it, we're gonna take your money. There's no service work, there's nothing that's provided for, it's a harassment tax and we need to send the right message to our businesses. Third, we gotta repeal the gas tax. We pay the highest gas tax in, in the state of Connecticut, uh, we pay the highest amounts for gas in the United States of America. If we want to make small business and medium-sized business thrive, we've got to lower the tax liability in terms of energy. And finally, we need to look at all of our business portfolio, all of our taxes, and certainly restore sanity uh, to the taxation policy to the businesses that are out there here in Connecticut. Mr. McKinney. Mr. McKinney. Thank you, and, and let me also add my uh, thanks to the Colchester Republicans uh, for having us here uh, today. Uh, I agree with, uh, with Mark. This uh, is a great crowd and a great event. I uh, kind of feel like we're almost a presidential debate up here for all of us. Uh, look, uh, you know, Governor Malloy about two weeks ago said that Connecticut will never be a low tax state. He's given up on Connecticut, but I haven't. In our lifetime, Connecticut has been a low tax state. And when we were a low tax state, people moved to Connecticut. Businesses moved to Connecticut. People, hardworking people, create jobs, not government. We always need to remember that. And specifically, small business. A majority of businesses in Connecticut are small businesses, less than 10 people. 70% of new jobs created are small business owners. People putting out their own risk and investment to create jobs. So we need to first get our fiscal house in order, balance our budgets, shrink government, reduce spending in the state of Connecticut so we can engage in tax reform. When we reform taxes, we can lower taxes. Uh, Mark's right, get rid of the business entity tax, lower the gas tax, get rid of the minimum business tax, which says even if you haven't made any money, you still have to pay a tax. We have to change the regulatory scheme in Connecticut. We need state government to have one-stop shopping. That means if you have a permit or an application that's going to go to multiple agencies, you just go to one place at once where they can all review it instead of popping from one, one agency to the next, which takes too long. Uh, that's how we can start immediately to make Connecticut more business friendly. Mr. Foley. Uh, I'd also like to thank our host and uh, thank all of you for coming. I really, really appreciate your interest. It's a very important election. I uh, am a business person, I'm not a career politician, so I understand what business people uh, need and what they want to hear from their government leaders in order to be interested in growing their businesses. As you know, small businesses create virtually all of the new jobs in the economy. And so we, we depend on the entrepreneurs and the innovation of small business leaders to create jobs here in Connecticut. So the first thing we have to do is we have to solve the fiscal challenges of our state. No business uh, person or employer wants to stay here with the risk of having to pay the bills in the future that this governor and our legislatures piled up over the years. Um, I would conduct what I call a red tape review. I would look at every regulation and piece of paperwork that applies to businesses and individuals. And any that, that, that aren't supported by good public policy, I would eliminate. Uh, governor um, Scott Walker's done this in Wisconsin and other 
States, it's been very effective at reducing burdens on, on businesses. I would also get rid of the business entity tax, and I would travel around the state and make sure that business people understand that I, as governor, a business person, understands their problems, want them to stay here, to treat them like customers, and understand how important they are to have this future. Mr. Loretti. Well, good evening, and thank you for being our host tonight. Allow me to say Happy Easter to everyone. Uh, as I know, the weather has finally turned, and Easter is uh, welcoming uh, all of us in a very nice fashion. Experience tells me that before you can do many different things that have been suggested already, like get rid of this tax and the other tax, you have to control the cost of living and doing business in this state that is continually on the rise. That in itself will be a challenge because there are certain obligations that we that we will inherit. But uh, being able to stabilize the cost of, of, of living would benefit everyone, every business, every resident, every taxpayer. And that's the first thing that has to be done. The second thing that I would do is I would try to enact, uh, based on the makeup of the legislature, uh, regulation reform. Because it's a drag not only on the services that municipalities and the state provide, but also our businesses. The, the next thing that I, I, we would have to do is uh, implement a tax reform, which would be a, a broad and comprehensive uh, undertaking. And I assume my time is up. It's a little hard to see you guys now. I don't know if you want to. Uh, if you can maybe move a little closer. Let me, uh, I don't need a chair right now. Can I, do you mind taking this chair to sit more on the floor? Um, can, can I ask, uh, can you all tap your microphone? I don't want to ask you what you're saying. I, I think, I'm not sure if some of you didn't have them on, but they weren't working, I apologize. And please, uh, The question I was thinking was whether Mr. Loretti had some time left on the clock. Did he? You had 10 seconds. You had 10 seconds, sir. Right. So we almost understand that this uh, continuing trend of uh, taxes and expenses has got to be has got to be altered and stopped and eventually reversed before you can do some of the other things. And my experience as a mayor and as a business owner tells me that when your overhead uh, goes up, you know you can't raise your prices to sell your product. You have to find innovative ways to be able to uh, supply that service. Thank you. Mr. Visconti. Thank you, uh, Colchester Republican Town Committee, for having us this event tonight. It's fantastic. Um, great to see a good crowd here on Saturday night. Uh, as a former West Hartford Town Councilor and candidate for Congress, I've, I've been in the political game, I would call it, for about 10 years. And I started in West Hartford uh, opposing a development because it was a uh, development that used uh, taxpayers' bonding money without a bidding process. We see Governor Malloy doing that, trying to basically bribe businesses to stay here. So we have major corporations that are leaving. The small business is a problem. In a year of the race, I've talked to hundreds of small business owners. The regulations have already destroyed their ability uh, to make a dollar. They're cutting back on their staff. And uh, their answer for what we need to do right away is put a Republican in, in office, curb the federal regulations, the state regulations, the local regulations, any way we can uh, as, a, as a party, because they're ready to close up shop. And uh, the 1010 minimum wage is something that's completely they're against, because now they're not going to hire someone to sweep up the, uh, the pizza restaurant or the barber shop. And uh, they're crying out for help because the state of Connecticut isn't paying attention. The bottom line is customers have no cash in their pocket and their sales are off. We need to reform government at every level, as everyone here previously stated, and begin day one because businesses are going to continue, the small business owners to close up. Uh, that will fall, the tax revenue will increase on, on the individual. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dean. Yes, thank you for holding this forum. I was talking with Tony uh, just before the debate started out in the, in the dinner, at the dinner. And he told me that he has an auto body repair shop, or actually an auto repair shop. And I said, do you do auto body repair? And he said, well, I did. And I said, well, have you ever done it at any point since 1965? And he said, 
uh, yes, at some point in the past. And I said, well, the state of Connecticut, with the Connecticut Transfer Act, has wiped out the value of your property, even if you did auto body repair for one hour after a particular date. Uh, this is the kind of regulation, these are the kinds of laws that we have in the state, and they are extremely harmful to business. I'm an attorney, I defend businesses against the, the state's overreaching regulations, complex regulations, and I do constitutional law. I've run for attorney general twice, and I have run on a platform of making Connecticut business friendly. Running for governor, I have a six-point platform to eliminate the income tax, to end public sector unions while honoring current commitments to state employees, to end efforts to reform schools that are high-functioning schools that don't need reform, we don't need to break them to fix them, and focus instead on schools in the inner city and end common core. To focus on bringing affordable energy, including nuclear power, which we can do safely, back to the state. To fix transportation, trains, roads, bridges, and make it safe and modern, and so that people can move in and out of the state easily, and to reform the judicial system, particularly the family court system. Uh, of the uh, I have heard loud and clear from the people of Connecticut that they are taxed too much, we spend too much, they're just done. Thank you. And thank you.